everybody. It's me, Chris Smith. And look, I went recently and did a sleep study to see if I have sleep apnea. You know, I shouldn't tell you my private medical business, but we're all friends here, and I have no shame or any secrets, really. Um, I did a sleep study at home uh, a few months ago, and the results they told me that I had like 72 incidents an hour. And I said, do you mean a night? And they said, no, we mean an hour. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means that I was, that I stopped uh, breathing for 72 times during, <laughs> during an hour, uh, which doesn't seem like very good. Oh, I'm out of breath just thinking about it. But, um, so they finally had me come in and do a sleep study in person. And I rather enjoyed it, and I got to wear this thing, and they let me keep it. Um, the results won't be in for a couple of weeks, so we'll see if I really... Well, I mean, we're sure that I have sleep apnea, but it might not be so severe as that. But we'll see, and I'll probably have to wear one of those sleep mask things at night, the CPAP thing. Um, which it'll be nice to be able to breathe at night, because sometimes when I'm asleep... I don't breathe very well. I have trouble breathing through my nose, and I like to put Vicks Vapo Rub under my nose just to be able to breathe. Maybe keep the window cracked a little to let some fresh cold air in. And of course, I keep Blackie Humphrey with me at all times. He's a great comfort. But, um, you know, the thing that I like to do before I go to sleep is read. And I read a little bit, and then I listen to Alec Baldwin interview Elaine Stritch on an old episode of Here's, Here's the Thing, the Alec Baldwin's podcast. Um, and um, I listen to that almost every night. Same, same episode over and over. Sometimes I listen to the one with Rosie O'Donnell. But um, usually it's Elaine Stritch because there's just something... Elaine Stritch was a great actress... A great broad, um, great legend of the theater. And um, for some reason, there's some times that she reminds me of Betty. Just because Betty is a straight shooter. She tells you like it is. She tells you what she's thinking. And so does Elaine Stritch. But uh, Betty's a little, well, a lot more religious, it seems, than Elaine Stritch seemed to be. But, I mean, she was a virgin, Elaine Stritch, for a long time, up until her late 20s, maybe even, and went to um, the Sacre Tour and, like, a convent school, and um, then she, <laughs> she tells funny stories about how Kirk Douglas tried to take her to Palm Springs for the weekend, and then, of course, she... Um, she made him turn around because she was nervous because she was still a virgin. And he was, she said, he was dealing with it. He knew I was a virgin. But so I listen to that when I sleep and that sort of helps me sleep. But one of the things I do when I sleep, before I go to sleep, is read a little bit. And I love, I love biographies or autobiographies. And one of the ones I'm reading right now is Leading Lady, a memoir of a most unusual boy by Charles Bush. Charles Bush is a great actor who often plays lady characters. Um, he played um, in Die, Mommy, Die. He wrote and, and acted in Vampire Lesbians of Sodom back in the day and always plays these these female characters that um, they always remind me of Eve Arden and <laughs> but here's Charles Bush I think that Charles Bush makes a very beautiful woman um, but this book is very interesting about his life in the theater and Sarah Jessica Parker who you know I love says a magical tale of how Charles brought drag into the present by celebrating the glamour of the past. So 
he always watched those old old movies from the old the black and white movies and the musicals and stuff and um his leading ladies are like Rosalind Russells and things like that. You know, I never really got into the older movies. I mean, when I was a kid, we would always watch Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz when they would air every year, or The Ten Commandments, stuff like that. And I did watch, um, with my mother, I would watch um, um, Sh uh, Shirley, um, oh Lord, hold on. I needed my drink to help me remember Mm. Shirley Temple movies and and the Little Rascals things like that, but I never really got into all the old movies. Betty Davis always scared me, and Joan Crawford. I always thought they were just so over the top, uh, over actors. But I mean, great talents. Uh, bravo to them. It was a different time. Oh, mm. delicious. But yes, so that's one of the things I'm reading. But you know what I'm really devouring right now? It's a new book about the old soap opera Ryan's Hope. And it just came out this month. Um, well, in October. Um, and it's called Ryan's Hope, an oral history of daytime's groundbreaking soap. Now... For those of you who don't know, Ryan's Hope was on from 1975 on ABC to 1989, just January 13th, 1989. And it was a great loss when it, when it went off the air. It was a winner of many Daytime Emmy Awards, Writers Guild Awards. It was considered one of the best soap operas back in the day. And had actors such as Kate Mulgrew, um, oh, Helen Gallagher as Maeve Ryan, Bernie Bauer, who um, played Johnny Ryan, and you know, just so many people. Ron Hale as um, Dr. Roger Coleridge. Um, Rosie O'Donnell was a big fan, and one of the one of my favorites on the show was Eileen Kristen. Who played Delia Reed, Ryan, Ryan, Coleridge, Crane the Third? Um, hold on, I have a picture of me and Delia Reed, Ryan, Ryan, Coleridge, Crane the Third herself, um, um, Eileen Kristen. Okay, I may have shown you this in the past, but here I am at the um, Indie Series Awards pre party the night before. This was in April of 2022, and I got to meet Eileen Kristen who was in the original cast of Grease. And um, look how nice I look in that black shirt. With Where is that black shirt? I haven't seen that in a while. I need to really find that and wash it. Um, and my hair looks so white. Isn't it crazy how white it is? I'm getting old, viewers. But she is an icon. And this book by Tom Lasanti is a love letter to Ryan's Hope, to soap operas, and um, to television, really. Um, and it goes year by year, and he interviews a lot of people. Now um, it's disappointing. Some of the people that he asked to end, that he in, you know wanted to interview, like Kate Mulgrew, who played Mary Ryan, Mary Ryan, um, um, what was Jack Jack Finelli, Mary Ryan Finelli. Um, they said no, and you know, for whatever reason. But uh, enough people do talk about it, and it was created by Claire Labine, the great Claire Labine and Paul Mayer. And um, um, Paul's children speak a lot in the book. And it's done as interviews. Um, now, you know, occasionally... It'll get a little repetitive when somebody's talking about a d certain director and then the next actor talks about a certain director. And they had two directors that they, were, that they talk about a lot. Um, Jerry Evans and Leela Swift. Here's Claire and Paul. And here's the family and the original cast. And, you know, they had, they had five children 
including Frank Ryan and Pat Ryan, who was a doctor, Mary Ryan, they had Siobhan, and the seldom seen Kathleen. And it's set at an Irish pub. They own an Irish bar in New York City. And this was the first time that a daytime soap opera was set in um, a real city. They were always set in, you know, may uh, fictional towns. Here's Mary and Jack Finelli. I always like Jack Finelli. And the great Louise Schaefer was on it for many years, and that's her with one of the Frank Ryans, played by Daniel Hugh Kelly, who went on to great success in primetime. Oh, everybody loved. Here's um, here's the other Delia. Randall Adams. Remember when she got kidnapped by the gorilla, Prince Albert, and carried to um, to uh, Belvedere Castle in um, Central Park? I love that storyline. And here's the love triangle between Seneca and he married he married that young girl Ray Woodard's daughter, um, Kimberly, and I mean she was like seventeen, eighteen, and he married her. And then she started sleeping with Michael Corbett's character, um, Michael Pavel. And then later he slept with Ray, her mother. And wouldn't you know, he ended up getting murdered. Um, you know, there's a lot of episodes that I didn't get to see because I had to go to school. And my mommy made me go to school and I had to miss so many soap operas. Which was a tragedy. And I don't think I got my VCR until... Um, 82? Maybe 81, 82. Um, I know one of the early things on Days of Our Lives that I taped was when the Salem Strangler was on the loose. I loved that. But yeah, Ryan's Hope was one of my favorite soap operas. And it did only lasted not even 14 whole years. So it was a short-lived soap opera for something so highly rated. And this book is riveting when they talk about when Claire and Paul sold the soap opera to ABC. And then ABC started really interfering with everything. So I love reading about TV things. And I love reading about theater things because even though I don't really want to work in television anymore I've created a lot of shows um, with my writing partner George and we still work on Roads to Keystone and now that the writer's strike is over and the writer's strike and the actor's strike we can return to filming Roads to Keystone because we have three more episodes for the to finish out this little chapter of the saga. I know it's been going on for many years, but it takes a village to put on this show, and our village only has like three or four people. So yeah, I'm sure you'll understand, viewers. But um, So we're going to have new episodes in 2024, and I'll be playing... Um, Father Finnegan and Dave Taub and another character which I can't tell you about just yet but um, that's really the only thing I want to do in television I want to read about it and I want to I want to maybe do some acting and stuff but I don't want to run a show I don't want to I don't want to have some network interfering with me and telling me I have to do this and I have to use this person and we have these budget cuts. It's just, it's too much. I just want to be left alone. I want to spend time with my little dog, Blackie Humphrey. And we just want to be left alone. Don't we, Blackie? <laughs> but anyway, those are some of the things that I'm reading or wearing on my face at night. And, um... Uh, I do recommend that you pick up Charles Bush's Leading Lady, a memoir of a most unusual boy, and Tom Lissanti's Ryan's Hope, an oral history of daytime's groundbreaking soap, because I do love an oral history. Okay, 
I'm sure I'll talk to you about more things the next time that it's Christmas time.